Jeremy S. Cook here, and today I'll be turning this, a Strand Beast kit, into a 3D printed Strand Beast complete with rocket launchers that are actually functional. In fact, they shoot fireworks. This has been a really cool build, and um, just follow along and see how I did it. You can see on the back here, that's all the relays and stuff. So the build started out modeling it in Fusion 360. I've been really happy with this CAD package so far. Coming from Pro-E and some other, other CAD packages, it's, it's been pretty pretty easy to learn. You know, starting out from scratch might be a little harder, but this is uh, pretty pretty great. Had to measure the, the kit to make sure the, the three holes mounted up correctly, as well as the motor hole. Now, the nice thing about this is that with Fusion 360, once you have your model correct, you just export it to Cura or whatever slicer program you have. The problem here was that my my model was going to take like six hours to print so i decided to cut some holes in it in the side and the top and the and everything this would turn out really good later when i tried to actually put the electronics on it so put some some chamfers and other holes in it and with that sufficiently sufficiently swiss cheesed i sent it to my trusty monoprice 3d printer and it did turn out my design for me pretty pretty much flawlessly added some support structures which was needed and definitely recommended for a big overhang like that and cut it out with my 3d printing knife and I was really happy to see that once that was done it actually fit right up with my my strain beast kit I had one already assembled from another build but went ahead and put this together showing a short little preview of how it goes together really happy with these kits all things considered So with the middle done, I, I marked it up so that I'd have the, the rods in more or less the same, the right position. Push those in and yeah, it looked like it worked pretty well. Now the electronics, I use these little circuit boards. I was gonna originally use a Wemos D1 Mini, but due to the voltage constraints and stuff, I decided to go with a Nano later. Now right here, I'm cutting out the, the plastic parts to make it kind of a, a shaft collar. You'll, you'll see that attached a little bit later. And then making a few corrections here, making some slots and stuff for the zip ties that will go on later. As much as I love my 3D printer, I'm not going to give up my manual tools anytime soon. So then it was time to hot glue the, the Nano onto the PCB, using this in kind of an unconventional way, putting everything on that side, but it worked out. And then I linked the two two LiPo batteries together for 7.4 volts rather than the 3.7 that just one would put together, put them in series. Then I'm putting a, a bank for positive power and negative power. That came in really handy since I've got so many things running off of it. Yep, looks pretty good there. Now after that, it was time to attach the motors. These little gear motors are tiny, but they work really well, have quite a bit of torque because of the reduction. Soldered that on and then more hot glue to attach the servo bank or the <laughs> relay bank and the motor controller. This would sit on the, the bottom level, as you can see right there. Putting everything with the nice screw terminals, that's going to be the, the motors. And everything looked good there. Had to put a resistor in for the Bluetooth module, make sure everything fits up nicely. And then I'm trying to squeeze everything in the, the middle part, kind of like a Almost look like a chariot or something. And as you can see here, once it's plugged in, it actually did walk just a tiny bit. Painted with some black paint. I, I could be done there, but I decided to just take this all the way and actually put paint on it, make a nice paint, make it look kind of like, kind of like in between like an ATST from Star Wars and a World War II battleship with the way the the paints, just the the random colors and, and slots and stuff. This was accomplished by using some masking tape. Put all that on there, then paint it with some gray, like some slate paint. This came out a really nice effect, you'll, you'll see in just a second. Now the legs were a little bit harder to, to paint just because you've got so many nooks and crannies, you had to like put the masking tape in there. But once everything came off, it's just such a good feeling to, to pull it off and to see it, see your creation. So it looks so much better than just regular, <laughs> like no paint. So, same thing with the legs, those look good, fit back together nicely. 
and then I had to stuff the electronics back in. If I make a next version of this, I'll probably make it a little bit wider and make some slots so I can just pull it in and out, but hindsight is 2020. Now these, these poles, these rods I pushed in, those are from the Strand Beast kit. With that done and secured, I decided to go ahead and try it out with my smartphone. Had a little app that I used for it. Not that I wrote it, but anyway, you can see it here tested, go up, down. And then I decided to put a front on it. This, this face really set the build off nicely. I hadn't planned on this originally, but this makes it look really good, especially that's after it's painted like the rest of the thing. Yep, looks pretty good. And then it was time to put some, some LEDs on there. Push those in. It was just, just tight enough that I, it was a nice press fit. So then I soldered some resistors on and hooked up the lights. Checking the polarity with a little CR2032 battery. Once that was in place, I hot glued the circuit boards down as well as the leg assemblies. Once that had dried a little bit, I put a zip tie on there to, to secure it even further. This this works pretty well, actually. Pretty happy with how that, that turned out. More zip tie, of course. Or more, more hot glue, of course. And after that, it was running around on my table. Turning left, right, doing its thing. So then it was time to add the weapons to it. I decided to use some conduit. I think it's half inch conduit. Line it up there. Actually put another coat of spray paint on there as well as on the on the rocket tubes. So then I attached some nitinol wire and after putting some voltage on it, it does it does catch on fire. It was looking pretty pretty hopeful for how this project will turn out. I decided to attach everything with these alligator clips. That's not the most secure way to do it, as you'll see in just a second, but seemed like the best, my best option at the time. Painted the tubes with the gray color and like the main body, it just turned out just, just spectacular. With that done, done, I applied some more zip ties to attach the cover to the front as well as the rocket tubes. Those look like they'll work pretty well. And then I cut the, snipped the end off the actual rockets that I'd be launching, actual fireworks. So then another little test on the, on the table. Looks pretty good. Oh, don't fall off and blink your eyes. That's good. So time for the test. So that didn't work how I wanted. It just kind of went off when I hooked it up. Also, you can see the little, little glowing wire there. That means some problems, some wiring problems. After hooking that up, I decided to use these lever nuts, which, which secure things really well. You can see you hooked up with a nine volt battery there. It's glowing nicely. In fact, what I decided to do was just, just use the nine volt battery as a separate power supply for the, for the launching system. This worked out pretty well, as you'll see in a minute. There I am replacing the wiring since everything was kind of messed up from that last experiment. These lever dots are really great because for the nitinol wire, it's so thin, but it grips it nicely as well as larger gauge wire too. Only thing is you gotta watch your fingers, otherwise it'll pinch you, <laughs> but that's a, a small concern. And that looks pretty good, time for a test. So after hanging it to it, it's time to launch it with my cell phone. See what I can do. And success. Let's see that again. Now for rocket number two. Another successful launch. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. Although I don't know if those fire engines and 
and police officers are coming for me. I guess we'll have to see. But if you enjoyed the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, or leave a comment. Jeremy S. Cook, signing off. So if you want to see some more fireworks footage, here's some more. Use a propane torch for this. Just decided to, you know, just have a little fun with it. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great 4th of July and uh, be safe with your fireworks and, and such. Actually, looks pretty good. I'm really happy with how, how this turned out. Should be a, a lot of fun to use. Maybe, maybe I'll try it later at a picnic or something. So, anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.